What's up, homies? My name is Matt Lurker, and if I could tell you a little secret, everyone I know is scared. Everyone I know is worried that the housing market is going to crash. I get it, though. The housing market is a major concern for a lot of people, because some of us are still emotionally scarred from 2008, from when the whole world fell apart. Or at least that's what I thought happened. I was only in sixth grade. I've had a million people come at me and say that the housing market is going to collapse. And to see if we're about to have another crash, let's first look at what actually caused the 2008 housing crisis, and then see if we're at that same point today. Oh, and while I'm doing that, why don't you go ahead and subscribe already? Okay, so take a step back, close your eyes, and remember a time when low-cut jeans and crimped hair were cool. We've come a long way, haven't we? Anyway, back in the days leading up to the 2008 housing market collapse, there were a mix of factors that caused it, but I'm gonna filter it down to just three reasons that we'll talk about. The first factor that helped cause the 2008 crisis was the bandwagon effect that was sweeping across the country about getting into a new home. And those of you who are actually familiar with what happened will be quick to point out that there was also a very high demand for mortgage-backed securities. But hold your horses, because that's part of my next point. Anyway, to understand why any of these were a big deal, you first need to understand basic supply and demand. Imagine you're back in elementary school, and for lunch that day they're serving pizza, but they ran out halfway through serving everyone. And you got the last slice, and a lot of the other kids that already got their pizza have already eaten theirs. But because everyone was excited for the pizza, and you have one of the only slices left, you could easily trade that for like three chocolate milks if you wanted to. Childish analogies aside though, whenever there's a high demand for something, and also a limited supply, the price of that good will rise until the market is no longer willing to pay that price. Bringing it back to the topic at hand though, the demand for housing was very high in the years leading up to the financial crisis, driving prices further and further. There was also just the expectation that homes would continue to appreciate forever and ever, and then people didn't want to miss out on those possible gains by buying later. Reason number two is a low amount of government regulation. And this part is pretty technical, and I'm gonna to try to keep it pretty simple here, because we could do an entire series of videos just about the 2008 financial crisis. But what drove it home here was the demand for mortgage-backed securities. So imagine your local bank. They've got hundreds of customers coming in every week, many of them wanting to hop on that bandwagon and get into a mortgage. This bank has thousands of mortgages already on the books, and those mortgages pay a steady cash flow each month as the bank slowly recoups the sums of money that it lent out to all those people. If the bank wants to get their money back sooner though, they can sell the ownership of that mortgage or that loan to another institution who will then become the owner of your mortgage. To make even more money though, the bank can sell a bundle of those mortgages to an investment bank. And that investment bank is gonna take that bundle, put it with other bundles of mortgages that they've already gotten, package it all together, call it a security, and then sell shares of it to investors, almost like an ETF. Now, if you're not completely lost from all that, this doesn't sound like an awful idea as long as two things remain constant. Number one, home prices continue to rise. And number two, no one defaults on their mortgage. But if everyone defaulted on their mortgage at the same time, then that would leave these securities completely worthless with no one left to foot the bill. Now let's bring it full circle. For years, lending requirements were super loose, and in an effort to sell even more mortgage-backed securities, banks were writing loans left and right. They were even engaging in predatory practices where they were targeting buyers with low income or bad credit, or sometimes they wouldn't even verify someone's income. And they would hook in these unsuspecting buyers with an adjustable rate mortgage that started off with a very low interest rate, but then after a few months would balloon to levels that no one could pay. All of these factors combined led to such a high demand for housing and also a high demand for mortgages written to people who couldn't actually afford them. So eventually the bubble burst and people were defaulting on their loans left and right. This led to lower demand in the housing market, which slashed prices. This also left investors and investment banks holding these mortgage backed securities that suddenly became worthless. And investors tried to pull all their money out to avoid some of the losses. And this further depressed the market. And again, there were a lot of complexities that affected what happened, but those are the main reasons why life sucked for a lot of people for a few years. So now for the urgent matter at hand. Will this bubble burst and why are prices soaring? Probably because you haven't liked the video yet, but just in case that's not it, here's three reasons. Firstly, it's never been cheaper to borrow money before. 
And every business owner knows what I'm talking about here, but the Federal Reserve sets a baseline interest rate that they charge to the major banks in the US. And then those banks tack on a little extra, add some fees, and then you come up with a number that we as the consumer pay when we wanna go get a loan. In 2020, the Federal Reserve lowered their interest rate to nearly zero. In turn, all other banks lowered their rates to historical lows. And this change in lending rates reduced the amount of interest that you would pay significantly. Even just a 1% difference in your rate can save you hundreds of thousands of dollars in the long run. Check out this example where someone could save over $200,000 by getting just a 1% lower rate. And I know that most of us aren't buying million dollar homes right now, but it's easier to see the difference when the principal amount of the loan is larger. Secondly, there's a low supply of homes right now. Back in 2020, everything shut down. Businesses stopped operating, including the building and development of new homes. This caused a low supply of new homes for people to buy because everything from the supply chain of raw materials, the availability of labor, and the willingness of lenders stopped. Everything in the whole world came to a halt and we're still seeing the effects of that months later. The third reason that prices have been riding is that as metropolitan areas have been completely shut down, people have realized that they don't actually need to live there anymore to be able to do their jobs, if they even still have jobs. So people from larger cities have been moving to states like Nevada, Texas, and my home state of Idaho, including other residential areas. And buyers from the big city probably have more money to spend and sellers in the suburban market know that, so they charge more money, which further raises the price. So to sum up, we have a very limited supply of homes due to the lack of building. We have higher demand because people are moving and even higher demand because it's never been so cheap to borrow money. All of these things have just combined into the perfect storm that some would call a bubble in the market. But here's my take on it. While all of these factors have pushed the market to where it is right now, I think that the Fed is going to raise interest rates later this year to manage inflation and to help push the economy back to normal levels. Also, more states are opening up right now. And as of right now, 40% of the United States population has been vaccinated. As more states open back up, more jobs open back up, and a lot of those will be in construction. Personally, I expect the supply of new homes to meet the demand for homes around early or middle of next year. And at that time, the housing market in general will either depreciate slightly or just level off. I don't expect there to be a crash in the housing market at all. But depending on how fast the Federal Reserve raises their interest rates, that may affect whether the housing market depreciates slightly or just levels off for a while. So those are my thoughts. I'm not going to be buying into the housing market anytime soon, but let me know if you are. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. As always, I love you guys and I'll catch you next time.